IBD. I'm Meredith Heyman. This is Industry Insights. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, each episode, we're going to talk about a hot news topic for IBD. With me today is Eric Savitz. He's the Associate Editor for Technology at Barron's. We spoke a little while ago about how Netflix and other streamers were going to survive the strikes in Hollywood, specifically with the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild of America. Now, the WGA strike has come to an end. It started, let's remember, on May 2nd. Hollywood had been out of business, if you will, for a bit. But now that is over. They're getting back to work soon. And we're going to talk about what's next for Netflix. So we'll chat for a few minutes. Eric, what's going on? Well, uh, yes, it's it was a long strike uh, by the Hollywood writers. Um, we should start to see some original programming, uh, particularly early for things like late night TV shows um, returning within a week or two. Um, scripted TV will take a little longer and the same with movies that got uh, put on hold while the strike was uh, unfolding. Uh, the, of course, the actors are still on strike. So we're not completely out of the woods yet. Uh, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Right, right. And what do you think, uh, trajectory speaking, for now that the there's been a deal reached with the WGA, it seems like things will soon uh, end for the side strike? Yeah, I think, you know, the, 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 the terms of the writer's uh, agreement, which include things like better pay, uh, limitations on the use of AI, um, you know, uh, Lim, uh, required numbers of people who work in the writer's room, of a bunch of issues that they were very concerned about. Um, some of those overlap with what the actors are trying to achieve. And so I suspect it will be relatively quick from here to get um, that one settled and get Hollywood uh, back on its way. Sure, sure. Um, now, Netflix, I remember you saying when we spoke initially, they were like enemy number one when it came to uh, these strikes. Right. Now that everything is over or coming to an end, as you said, how are they faring financially? How is the stock doing? What are we look, what could we be looking to see, uh, for if you will, their next earnings report? Right. So I think there's a few factors when you look at the, the future of Netflix. So the strike is a factor. Um, ironically, um, it reduces their costs when they're not uh, producing a lot of content. And so it actually improves their profitability. And so we'll see some of that when they report results for the September quarter, which is about a month uh, month out from now. Um, so that's one factor. Looking further out, of course, uh, we all want to watch more uh, new content uh, it, um, from Netflix. And that includes some favorite shows that um, got uh, delayed, like st the new uh, season of Stranger Things should have been in production by now and um, has been delayed. So uh, some, some of that will be a little bit further out. Uh, that could impact earnings over the next few quarters. Um, if people were clamoring to watch the new season of Stranger Things, uh, maybe they wait on signing up for a new subscription. So there's some potential impact there. I would say though that the big drivers for uh, the, the, the outlook for earnings for Netflix really comes from two other things. Um, one is um, what they describe as um, password sharing, which is kind of an ironic name because what it really is is a crackdown on sharing passwords. Right. Uh, they want people who have been sharing their passwords, say with your children or your parents, or your cousins or your next door neighbor um, to get their own Netflix subscriptions. Um, and the hope has been that that will drive uh, a new leg of growth for them. Um, it's early and we'll see some people on the street are a little concerned that in the current environment, um, the econ economic times are tough for some people, that some consumers may just opt not to do it. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. The other piece of this is it's still very early um, in the Netflix push to sell an advertising driven subscription tier. Uh, now that tier, uh, which is cheaper, right? Uh, so you, you know, they get some of the, uh, revenue from advertising instead of from subscriber dollars um, is off to a modest start. Um, it it's a good uh, it's a good situation for Netflix because they think they can attract consumers who might not want to pay the full price for Netflix. Um, and and the advertising is generally lucrative. This is an audience that advertisers would like to reach. 
Um, so that's another part of the earning story for Netflix. And I think it's one that will take a little longer to play out as they grow the advertising driven subscriber base. Um, you know, I think one of the other wild cards for Netflix here is just the state of the consumer economy. Um, consumers, this is a consumer driven business, obviously. Consumers are feeling a little tighter. Uh, the uh, the streaming business is highly competitive, and we'll see um, in a few weeks how the September quarter went. Right, and if you have to tighten the purse strings at all, and if you're waiting, as you mentioned, for Stranger Things to come out, there's going to be a longer lag time. Maybe you do, if you need to get your own subscription, maybe you wait. And maybe you wait. Um, right. So, and the other thing that's true that I think consumers have learned is. Um, they can uh, easily start and stop these subscriptions. Typically, there's no cost to, um, uh, uh, you know, subscribing for a month, letting that subscription uh, lapse, and then maybe subscribing to something else that maybe has a different program that you want to watch. Uh, so there's some of that consumer behavior. I think in terms of the the, the settlement with the writers, uh, there are a few things that could impact them in the long run. Uh, there's some um, more favorable terms for residuals, which in fact is one of the issues that they particularly had with Netflix or historically, um, you know, whenever your rerun of, you know, I don't know, Gilligan's Island would reappear, you would, you know, hit the cash register a little each time. Um, that's a little harder to see in Netflix's case. They don't, they haven't historically structured their contracts that way. Um, so there could be a little bit of a hit to them financially on that side. Also, they've had to agree to, you know, at least a, a minimum number of writers per show um, and to keep them on throughout the um, this, each new season. So there's some economic impact there, but I think it's largely offset by the fact that they'll be back in full production. Now, I think one of the things I should also mention, which I think we talked about before, is Netflix is it has been well positioned uh, relative to some of the uh, competitors because it generates so much foreign language content that hasn't been subject to these contracts, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been watching an Israeli uh, television show um, on Netflix lately and um, uh, called Beauty Queen of Jerusalem, which I would recommend. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not, uh, they're not American actors, they're not American writers, they're not part of the Writers Guild. Um, and so there's lots of that kind of content on Netflix. And so I think they've fared reasonably well through this period. And I think it is important to remember that we will see the ripple effects of this for a few months to come. Uh, so the fall, uh, the fall season, at least on broadcast TV, is dominated by reality TV and um, and sports. Uh, there's not a lot of original linear programming because there's been no one to create it or write it. Um, and the fall, um, and really, I guess the 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 movie slate for early 2024 is going to be a little light. Um, for that reason as well, as they play catch up. Um, so there'll be some, we'll be feeling the, the ripples of this for a while, but it's nice to see them back, uh, back sitting at the desk and typing away. Absolutely. Well, now that they are those writers, what's the one show that you're like super excited to see come back? Well, yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm just going to go back to Stranger Things. I, uh, I, I'm a big <laughs> Stranger Things fan. It's not my demographic really, but um it's uh it's a really fun show i think it's really smartly um, done and has a little bit of 80s nostalgia which kind of fits my my demographic uh so excited about that excellent i cannot wait i'm waiting I'm, i have a feeling i'm gonna have to wait very patiently but i want the final season of the crown just netflix speaking it's coming coming sooner or later yes right. Or so is Christmas, right? Yes. As my partner would say. Well, we'll be watching, Eric. And thank you so much for joining us. Amazing insight, I had no doubt. This has been Industry Insights. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Meredith Heyman. We'll see you next time.